on today's episode of Amazing Plastic. It's all about airbrushes, and I explain why I look like a homeless person. Promotional consideration for Amazing Plastic the Scale Model Show is brought to you by Tena Controls, makers of scale model lighting systems. Tena Controls brings models to life. Visit them today at tenacontrols.com. And by Paleo Acrylic Paints, with a wide range of highly pigmented colors specially formulated for models and miniatures. Paleo Acrylic Paints sold at hobby stores worldwide. And by Model Land Limited, specializing in radio control and scale models. Our store may be small, but our inventory is huge. Visit them today at modelland.com. Welcome to another episode of Amazing Plastic. I'm your host, Richard Cleveland. On today's show, there's a whole lot of things happening. We're going to dive into airbrushes. Jay Barron from Evil Duck Creations is going to show you how to break down your airbrush and do all that kind of cleaning and maintenance on it. I'm going to take you into more of the work that we did on the F100. And I'm also going to debut a brand new airbrush that we got here in the studio for my WADA. So stick around. There's a whole lot of show to get to. We're also going to be talking a little bit about some interesting painting masks and a contest all that more coming up in the news stick around well this week an amazing plastic scale model show news there's not a whole lot to report but we do have some great things i wanted to quickly tell you about why this is all over my face why i chose to grow a big beard well as you know november is november and it is to make people aware of men's health and men's health issues so i chose instead of getting rid of the mustache i chose to grow a beard and and fill it all in and uh, come december 1st all of it is going away so you'll uh, you'll be seeing me on the next episode with a clean shaven face and uh, it might surprise and shock some individuals but uh anyway november is november and uh, show your support for men's health issues uh everything from colon cancer prostate cancer to general men's mental and physical health issues so november is the time to show your support male or female if you're a female just go out and get one of those stick on mustaches you can do it we know you can it's a lot of fun uh what i do want to tell you about uh, there's some important stuff in the news this week Tena controls uh one of our sponsors here on amazing plastic they make some great and fascinating little lighting boards for your model kits. Everything from model cars, trains, all the way up to doing starships, uh, if you're into that. And they have decided that this year, in the 2014 season, they are not going to raise their prices. So that's great news for all of us that uh, continually buy lighting kits from Tenna Controls. Their prices will remain the same in 2014 so you don't have to worry about that but they've got a whole lot of new products coming down the pipe and uh, you want to go and check out tenacontrols.com for more information on what they've got coming uh video workbench uh friends of ours here at amazing plastic have dropped their prices on their digital downloads they have seven dvd uh, digital downloads available for you everything from basics of model building right through to more advanced techniques on cars planes um, as well as sci-fi modeling if you're into sci-fi modeling uh, great set of dvds uh, Chuck Davenport uh, has is the instructor on most of the DVDs and digital downloads. So you want to go and check out videoworkbench.com for the latest in their prices and the price drops that they have done on their digital downloads. Now, speaking of Video Workbench, they've got a contest going on where you can win the complete library of digital downloads uh, from what they have. Just head on over to videoworkbench.com, sign up 
for the contest. It doesn't cost you anything. It's absolutely free, and you could win a great prize package of resource material from Video Workbench. My good friend Jason Garris over there is uh, a heck of a guy, and he's been doing a lot of great work and putting these instructional DVDs together and digital downloads. So by all means, head over to Video Workbench and uh, get your copy or sign up to be uh, in the contest, which ends, I believe, very soon. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to be announcing the winner right here on December 14th, um, and or the winners of the contests. There's a first prize, second prize, third prize, and then a bunch of subsidiary prizes as well. So you make, make sure you want to go check that out. Videoworkbench.com. Uh, what else do we have here? We want to uh, also quickly talk about um, our break coming up, uh, December 14th will be our last show of 2013. We will resume again in January, continuing our episodes. Uh, hopefully we will be able to get all the episodes up on time for you. Uh, I know it's been a bit of a struggle and we are trying to get the shows out on time. Uh, there's been everything from hardware issues to software issues to uploading issues. Uh, these are the growing pains that you go through when you have a new show. So stick with us here at Amazing Plastic, the Scale Model Show. I want to thank our community over at G+. They've got a, a really cool event coming up, uh, and that is the 48-hour Get to Know Your Amazing Plastic Comrades. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to become part of our hangouts uh, that we do usually on a nightly basis. We all get together and we kind of chat and, and uh, have a good time. We talk about modeling and we talk about other issues as well. Not everything is about models and uh, we have a great, great bunch of people there. People that do cars, trains, planes, uh, armor vehicles, and sci-fi. So there's always something to, to get, get from the conversation. Or you could just come by and have a laugh with us. Uh, but they... Jack Holzer, our Google Hangout host, is hosting a 48-hour uh, Google Hangout marathon. So by all means, go and check that out. It's coming up real soon. Just watch the website or the community page for more information about when that's coming. And uh, what else are we going to be doing? We are going to be suspending our Hangouts um Come December 14th will be the last hangout, I believe, as we move into the Christmas season. We're going to, Naked 8 Productions is going to be down for three weeks, um, so I don't know if Jack's going to continue hangouts during that time. He may not. He, he needs a little bit of a break as well. So, uh, you know, the on-air hangouts may not be around, but we'll still be hanging around in the evening. And there's a whole lot of things to learn over there, and just come by and say hi. If you haven't been a part of our hangouts during the week, they're always on, and we usually send out invites to our entire community. So that's it for this week in the news. You know, we've got a great builder uh, that is a part of our community, and we're highlighting him next. So stick around. This week's community builder is Phil Robson. He brings us the Terminator 2 Hunter Killer model from Pegasus Hobbies in a 132nd scale. The completed model came in at around 9 inches in length. As with other Pegasus models that Phil has built, he was completely happy with the quality of the molding. There is no flash or any injector pin marks uh, on the model. The panel lines are crisp and finely detailed. Since he was lighting the model, the instructions were only followed in a general sense. However, this is a very easy model to build and well suited for the beginner modeler as it presents very few challenges. Uh, for lighting, he went with 3mm LEDs, bright white, uh, for the forward search lights and midsection floodlights. To represent activity from the engines, he used white 3mm LEDs in parallel with a flickering LED. The flickering LED is used to force the white LED to flicker in unison. For the navigation lights on the tail section, he opted not to light the extremely small clear conical sections. All of the attempts that he had to drill the, the parts in order to glue in the fiber optics became very problematic, so he opted to use one millimeter fiber optic cable and lit both ports, uh, the starboard and uh, port sides, with a blue light. Uh, even so, the one millimeter fibers needed to be carefully bent 
to a 90 degree angle and some trenching of the tail wing section was required to get a good fit. The model is mounted on a three quarter inch section of hollow brass tube, allowing uh, Phil to route the wiring to the nine volt battery supply. The model is finished with duplicolor metallic pewter acrylic and weathered with an oil wash of burnt umber to bring out the panel lines and provide a somewhat dirty effect. The base is finished with flat. Well, we're here at the bench with a brand new airbrush here in the studio at Naked Eight Productions for Amazing Plastic Scale Model Show. We got ourselves a new airbrush. Now, I picked this up from my local hobby shop. Uh, it was right around $60, so it really wasn't that brush that, that expensive. It was actually quite good, in, in fact. Now, this is uh, probably one of uh, Iwata's entry levels. This is a gravity-fed double-action airbrush. Let's open it up and have a look. All right, so inside the box, we have a nice, dense foam that the airbrush sits in. It comes with a little wrench, which is uh, always handy to have. Comes with a spare color cup, which is much smaller than the color cup, which is on top of the airbrush. The airbrush itself is an all metal construction. And uh, we're gonna get to that and see what else is underneath. See if we've got any literature. There we go. We have the instructions uh, for the airbrush underneath. And uh, this is tells you how to begin with your airbrush, how to play, how to use the paints. It also comes with a five-year warranty, and there's also information on how to contact Iwata, uh, and uh, you can go from there if you've got any problems with your product. Um, I've never used a Iwata product in my life, uh, so this is going to be. A joy to try out. I'm I'm so excited. I've been using uh, Pash airbrushes, uh, Badger airbrushes. I even used the Testers airbrush for some time. Um, I'm really excited about trying this airbrush uh, and uh, adding it to my collection of of tools here in the shop. Um, this is a double action airbrush. As I mentioned earlier, it is an all metal construction. A uh, very very stable. Uh, quite, uh, quite weighty as well. And it's, it's feels very comfortable in your hand. I'm right-handed. So when I'm looking down the barrel, it is very easy for me to see where my paint is going. And just like a pen, if you're, if you're, uh, if you like to write with a pen and you like a nice weighty pen, this is definitely the airbrush for you. Now in a double action airbrush, uh, you have, there's only one way to use it. And double action means that uh, it is pulling in air before it draws paint. Now, being that this is gravity fed, you would think that the air or the paint is just falling down into the tube. You release the air and it's going to throw out the paint. That is not so. Uh, by pushing down the button and releasing the air, it actually sucks the paint out through the nozzle and creates what they call an internal mix where everything is being done here in the body of the brush. It's not being done out here where you would have that on a single action. So how you want to use this is you press the button to get air and you pull back to get your paint. You, if you pull back all the way, you're going to get a full spray of paint. You're going to get a lot of paint coming out of there. You can control the, the amount of paint that you use with this airbrush by controlling how far back you pull that trigger. So it's a nice feel on that trigger, too. It's not too stiff. It's not loose. Um, we're going to break down this airbrush. One of the things that uh, Iwata says about this airbrush, you're generally going to spray between 10 and 60 PSI. That's what this, rated, this brush is rated for, so you can't go any higher than 60 PSI, pounds per square inch. And uh, most paints that you're going to put through this, whether they be acrylics, uh, or enamels, or um, some of the other paints that are out there, you're going to spray them at around 10, 15, uh, more like 15 to 25 PSI, depending, again, on the viscosity of the material that you're trying to put through it. Now, let's break this down. Uh, there's very good seals on the entire setup. The color cup comes off so that you can change it. 
Now, this color cup has a seal around the bottom. You can see that there's that red seal, and that seals the cup to the brush itself so that you don't get any leakage. If you've got leakage coming through there, either your cup isn't on tight enough to make the seal between the brush and the cup, or that seal is worn out, or, God forbid, you've cross-threaded uh, the cup into the airbrush. Now, it also has a pull-off top, so this large capacity cup will hold an, a, quite a bit of material. Uh, you can spray quite a bit. And if you're filling this up, you want to have a cup so that, or a lid so that you don't, uh, you don't spill it all over the place. The lid also has a little tiny hole in the very top. I don't know how well you can see that, uh, but it has a little hole in the very top. And that hole is to allow it to draw air in there as well. So you don't get uh, a negative pressure situation. So I'll put the, put the cup aside. Uh, when you're breaking down this airbrush for cleaning, a couple things that you want to do uh, is you want to make sure that you've dumped all of the material out of the uh, airbrush, out of the cup, put it back into your paint pot or wherever you're storing it, and then start uh, breaking down. Now, after each session of, of spraying with this airbrush, uh, you want to increase the pressure you want to spray cleaning solution uh, for a short time through the cup or put some in the cup and then spray it through. And you can use any, any airbrush solu any airbrush cleaning solution. I like to use the Iwata because we use Iwata uh, paints, uh, or pardon me, the Vallejo uh, airbrush thinner uh, or airbrush cleaner because we use Vallejo paints here in the studio. Now, if uh, once it's claw or once it's done, you spray the uh, cleaner through it, and you clean the needle if necessary. Now, cleaning the airbrush this way helps to clean the paint passage, uh, the nozzle, and the needle thoroughly. Okay, so if you period or if you're having a problem with that, periodically, what you're going to have to do is start to break down the the uh, airbrush. So we're going to start by taking off the spray nozzle. You can see there we have the needle sticking out the end, and then we open up the handle of the airbrush, which is back here, and we pull that off. Again, there's another seal right there around the uh, back end of that threading, so it really, it, this thing is, is remarkably built, very well done. So once you've unscrewed the handle, loosen the needle chuck nut, which is this right here, you're going to loosen that up, and you're going to pull the needle out. Okay. Remove the needle. You want to coat the needle lightly. And when you're cleaning a needle, you don't want to, you know, grab a piece of tissue and, and uh, you know, swirl it around. Just like a brush, you want to take it and you want to draw it against as you turn it. Just so very very gently you do not want to bend this needle okay so once you've done that and you've cleaned all the gunk off you want to take a little bit of lubricant and you're going to do this periodically and the lubricant that, that we have here is super lube this is from iwata as well uh this retails for around ten dollars this little tube of lubricant is going to go an awful long way um to help with the the airbrush now when you buy a brand new airbrush they all come pre-lubed from from the factory what i like to do is just take a little bit of lubricant and you don't need very much and you're just going to put a little dab will do you right on there take it right out there we go i put the cap back on my lubricant you're not using a lot like i said you don't need a lot now we're going to insert that needle back into the needle chuck. And we want to make sure that we get it in there. And just, just turn it a little bit as you put it in. You want to make sure that you get no binding. Okay. And push it all the way in. If you, get, if you feel any resistance, then you could be possibly bending your needle. And if you bend your needle, then you've got to go out and get yourself a new one. So once you've got that in there, tighten the, the, the needle chuck nut all the way back up. You don't have to over tighten it, just finger tight is fine. Replace the handle. Okay. Once the handle's on, take a little bit of your lubricant again. 
and oops, we got a little bit too much there. Of course, I was squeezing the bottle as I was taking off because I had too many things in my hand. So we're just going to clean that off. And we're just going to take a small little drop. I'm going to put it right there behind the handle. And that is it. That is all we need. Now we're done. We can replace the cap on our lubricant. Put that aside. Work that needle a little or work that lever a little bit. Uh, works really well. We want to replace our needle cap. Again, finger tight. You don't need it. You don't need to crank that on there. We're going to replace our color cup now. And again, you want to make sure that you don't cross thread this. If you cross thread this, you are in big, big trouble. Oh, again, I cannot get seem to get that. There we go. All right being a little too gentle with it. So now I've got it on there. It's seated really well. My airbrush is lubricated. It's ready to use. On my first use, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of that airbrush cleaner and I'm going to run it through um, my color cup just to make sure that everything is working properly and that I'm getting spray. And uh, that is pretty much it in a nutshell. That's how easy it is to take apart your Iwata airbrush, clean it up, get it ready for use. This is an incredibly well-built piece of machinery, and it is a piece of machinery. An airbrush is an investment. Take care of your tools like anything else, and we're going to see you next time here at the bench uh, when we're going to actually put this into use. Okay, so there you go. Amazing Plastic the Scale Model Show is proud to announce and welcome Aztec Dummy to its list of sponsors. Now, Aztec Dummy is a painting mask company. They create masks like this one for the NX01, the 1/350th scale from Polar Lights. Now, these masks are done with an updated design and updated materials, so it won't pull that paint off. They've got clear, concise instructions. So, my uh, suggestion to you is to get some Aztec Dummy painting masks for your next Starship project. With over 30 products in their lineup, you can find them at better online retailers. Check out Aztec Dummy in your next Google search. Hello, everybody. I am Jay Barron from Evil Duck Creations, and we are down in the painting room today because we're going to be talking about airbrush maintenance and cleaning. Welcome to the inside of my painting booth. Let's go over some of the things that you're going to need in order to clean and take care of maintain your airbrush. First thing you're going to want is paper towels. You're going to have liquid coming out. You're going to want to get rid of that liquid and mess. Paper towels, best way to go. Another handy thing, Q-tips. These are the more fancy wooden handled uh, type. I actually got these at a garage sale. Regular Q-tips are just fine. An airbrush cleaning station is an invaluable tool and if you have an airbrush you should have one of these. I bought this one from Harbor Freight for about ten dollars. You can get them. Iwata makes an excellent one. What you do is you stick the tip of the airbrush in here and you spray it. That's to clean the excess paint out of the airbrush or excess thinner out of the airbrush. It filters it so it doesn't blow that back up into the air. It's a way to do it and help save your lungs and all that other good stuff. You really need one of these. Some sort of solution to dissolve the paint that is inside the airbrush is very important. Fingernail polish remover or good old acetone are both great. They tend to cut through virtually any kind of paint. Dried on, still liquid, whichever. This is really, really handy stuff. Some people don't want to use acetone, don't want to touch it. I have found that acetone-free fingernail polish remover works just about as well. So, Cretex and other companies make an excellent airbrush cleaner. This is mainly intended for use with water-based colors, such as uh, acrylic paints, watercolor paints, watercolor ink, squash, things like that. This stuff, in fact, will cut through 
this kind of paint that's been dried on for for years so Cretex is a really really good product again other companies make similar things I make a lot of my own this is airbrush thinner or cleaner it works either way this is just Windex with vinegar now as in Windex it's got the vinegar already in it I didn't add vinegar to it do not use Windex with ammonia or any product with ammonia airbrushes are almost always made of brass with chrome coating chrome plating or whatever neither of those products do real well against ammonia it will eat them away something else you're gonna want a magnifier of some sort again I bought this at Harbor Freight it was dollar and a half it's got two different magnifiers on here giving me three levels of magnifying power I'll show you what this is for later you're gonna want one of these some beeswax this is been put inside of a little container here but beeswax is really good for sealing certain areas of the airbrush I'll explain how to use that in a minute you can also use chapstick that works just as well and this is just a bottle of glycerin we'll talk about this in a minute now we're going to get to cleaning your airbrush there are lots and lots of different airbrushes out there many many companies make them and some are more famous than others some are better quality than others it really comes down to a personal choice the truth though is there are two basic kinds the first type that most people start with is called the single action airbrush single action means you push down the button and it sprays paint it's very much like a fancy version of a spray can the nice thing about it is you have an adjustment here that expands or contracts the size of the paint that kind of the size of the paint spray that comes out and you can adjust the volume to a degree by adjusting the air pressure going in a lot of people think of graduating from this to the second type of airbrush but the truth is these are very handy and there are professionals out there that still only use these and they get amazing work done so we'll do this one first but the second kind of airbrush is called the double action airbrush this is a bottom feed double action this is a Pache VL this is my oldest airbrush that I still own I've had this particular airbrush for over 35 years and it still works it still works great it's called a double action airbrush because you push down on the button and that starts the air flowing but no paint as you pull back on the trigger a needle inside here is pulled back and that causes the paint to start to spray out the double action airbrush gives you incredible control because you can you can actually control the amount of volume of paint the volume of paint the size of the spray it gives you just so much more control than the single action again it's not better it just does things a different way this is a SOTAR 2020 I use these a lot as well this is also a double action airbrush but this is a gravity feed the paint goes in a little cup up on the top and then drips down in to the stream of the uh, stream when it's uh, spraying I keep a cap over the end of this one to keep help keep any damage for the needle or the nozzle uh, to keep that away because the needles and the nozzles on these things are terribly expensive and I don't want to replace them until I absolutely have to but let's start with the single action airbrush first thing you want to do is clean out a paint jar whether it's the one you're using or a different one clean it out put some thinner into this whatever kind of thinner you're, you're using if you're using a lacquer based paint you're going to want to use a lacquer thinner an enamel based paint you're going to want to use a lacquer thinner or preferably some sort of uh, mineral spirits or something to help clean that out and you want to stick that in there you want to stick this into the cleaning station which is right here you want to stick it into the cleaning station and spray it hopefully that stays on spray it until you're not really getting any color out 
anymore or as little as possible. You are still going to need to do some work. You can see there is paint inside here. So let's work on cleaning that out. I want to get all the paint I can out from inside the unit and from outside in the nozzle here. This is some of the Cretex cleaning solution. Just put it on here. And just a scrubbing action. Get inside, remove all the paint that I possibly can. It's coming out pretty clean. Can do a quick wipe down up in here. But I'm probably going to want to use one of these little scrubbers to get in and get the paint from around the nozzle. come out real well. We don't we did not even need to take the airbrush apart. Although we could have a quick rinsing with some fresh water and then letting it dry out. And it's as good as new. The single action airbrush is very, very easy to clean. The double action airbrush, that's a little different animal, but it's not impossible. It's not even that hard. With a double action airbrush, there are more moving parts and more things that can get dirty and more things that need cleaning. The biggest mistake most people make with a double action airbrush is they clean it too often and they clean it too thoroughly too often. The truth of the matter is a simple cleaning will suffice 90% of the time. There are times when you're going to need to do a thorough cleaning and a thorough cleaning if your airbrush starts sputtering or the paint volume is not working right or if the paint is not spraying straight then you might need a thorough cleaning. So let's look at a general cleaning First off, many times people think that by just spraying thinner through it until the thinner comes out clear, the airbrush is clean. Not true. At the very least, you want to take out the needle, very gently slide the needle out, give the needle a quick wipe down, always go from the bottom to the top. The reason for that is if you scrub it back and forth, I guarantee you're going to stab yourself right through the finger with the, uh, with the needle. These things are unbelievably sharp. Set it aside someplace safe. Now this is acetone that I've got inside here. If I had been just using regular acrylics, I could probably get by with a Createx. I was using enamels as well in here, so I'm going to want to use something a little more powerful. Scrub in here. As you can see we're getting some blue paint out of there. And we can use one of these scrubbers. Press it in. You might even be getting some liquid out of the tip. That's coming out very clean, so I could I could easily put this away, and I'd, I'd want to rinse it with some water at first. But I could put this away and then give it, you know, uh, use it again without worrying a whole lot about it. However, if it's starting to bind up on me or things like that that's when I want to give it a more thorough cleaning and that means taking it apart. First off, want to unscrew some of these various parts. Don't be afraid to take it apart. I mean you have instructions that will tell you how to put everything back together and every once in a while you've got to take it completely apart in order to give it some maintenance anyway. Take the tension spring tension knob off. This has a spring inside of it. Make sure you put the parts down 
in a place you know they're going to be because they can roll away and fly away and they're gone forever. With most airbrushes, you're going to want the cap and the uh, nozzle holder to be more than finger tight. You're going to want to use a wrench. It'll usually come with a wrench. Use a wrench to give it some wrench tightness. It doesn't have to be heaved down on so tight that you strip the threads. You just want to give it a little bit of tension on there. If it's finger tight, there can be problems, which I'll go over in a moment. Okay. I've taken taking the fine cap off and here is the nozzle it usually will pop out of there you do not want to press it on this side if uh, it, it's it can easily be damaged you can take a piece of toothpick or something like that give it a little shake and it comes out now I said you're gonna want to have a set of magnifiers. The reason for that is you need to examine the tip of the nozzle and the tip of the needle for any damage. Okay, under super magnification vision, this is the nozzle. Let's even take a look at this. You want to make sure that that tip is round, absolutely round, that there are no nicks or anything like that in that area. You just want to give it a, a good thorough looking, see if I can hold it still enough for you to see this. You want to give it a good thorough examination and make absolutely certain that it is clean. You don't want any damage to that tip because if there's any damage to it, your paint will not, your, your, your airbrush will not spray properly. You also want to check the needle. Check the tip of the needle. Is the tip of the needle straight? very often that little tiny tip can get bent. The very tip of it can get bent and if that tip gets bent I guarantee you your paint is going to spray funny, your paint, your, your airbrush may not even seal properly and you'll get paint whenever you press down on the button. Now these are both looking really good so I am going to go ahead and clean this. Okay we want to clean the cap and Sometimes dried paint gets in there and you, you really need to get that out by going inside. You can very, very gently use one of these brushes, get inside here and just, just very gently scrub. You do not want to ram real hard all the way in there. You can damage that tip and if you damage the tip, you need to replace the, cat, the, the, the nozzle. It's not, not a good way to go. A much better option is if you have an extra needle. This is a needle that was damaged uh, years back. The tip got bent and so I ended up buying a new needle and that's fine because you can use this as a cleaning tool. Take a little bit of the fluff from the end of a uh, cotton swab, cotton bud, q-tip, whatever you want to call it depending on what country you happen to be coming from. I've roughed up the end of this with some 150 grit sandpaper just to help give it some tooth so it will grab on to the cotton. Now I can dip that in here and I can get in and just turn back and forth to scrub out any paint that might still be in there. I've done this where it's taken me five, six, seven times to get all the paint out. You see now I'm starting to get some of the blue paint that was inside there out. And you just need to do this as many times as you have to until it comes out clean. Again with the needle, you want to make sure that that's been cleaned. The body part of the airbrush, especially up in the front here, Again, just using one of these uh, one of these tooth uh, tooth scrubbers here, cleaners, or using one of the airbrush cleaning brushes, 
just thoroughly get in here and scrub out any paint that might be still in there. You might even need to get back into this area to see if there's any paint. You can use a long Q-tip to get in, wipe off any paint that might have gone back there. All the way back there, there was a little bit of paint. Yeah, still a little bit more. Let's see if I can get rid of the rest of it here. That comes from the needle because the needle carries paint on it when you pull it out of the airbrush and so sometimes you're going to want to get all the way through the airbrush with a brush that'll just clean out any of the extra paint that might be in there and get it out of there and now I can rinse this with water and uh, and it's clean. I mentioned earlier that having glycerin on hand is a good idea. Some people have never used an airbrush lube in their life and they say their airbrush works fine and that may very well be true. However, I guarantee you an airbrush can be improved by using a little bit of lubrication in certain places. Now I use glycerin which is extremely common. The reason I use glycerin is it's a lubricant that also keeps, um, it, it, it will not damage the paint that might be going through. Silicon based lubricants can cause paints to fish eye and when they're drying and you don't want that. So what I do is I put a small drop of glycerin right on top of and see it from inside here right on top of the plunger where the air comes in and then the needle the nozzle or the trigger rather I'm sorry the trigger goes back in come on get in there you sometimes it's easier than others Okay, and now spring tensioner goes in and I'm also going to put a tiny drop on this. Just metal to metal you want some sort of a lubrication just like in your car. The needle tension nozzle back on. Now I'm going to put the needle in but I'm not going to put it in all the way. Be very gentle when sliding the needle. Actually I want to do one more thing very quickly. I'm going to put a little bit of glycerin on here and I want to wipe the needle with it. Just a little bit of glycerin on the needle. Does it help? I don't know. It seems to. Not putting that all the way in because I haven't put the end together yet. Obviously, I would scrub these as well with a little bit of with a little bit of um, thinner of some sort. Now, if you are experiencing when you, when you press down on the trigger with your double action airbrush, if you're getting bubbles in the cup or something like that, I can guarantee you the reason is this particular part is not tight enough on here or air is getting through here somehow or another and down into the cup. One of the easiest ways to take care of that is a little bit of beeswax or a little bit of uh, chapstick works as well. A little bit of beeswax wiped on here. Carefully Put the cap back on. Probably a little beeswax on the very tip here as well. 
again gently. And then a final little bit to snug it up. And now I could put the needle all the way forward. You don't want to ram it for you. You just want to go until it touches. And it is, once that's clamped down, it is ready to go. For storage of your airbrush, I usually, just as a precaution, pull the needle back a little bit. Just when I'm storing it and not using it because I don't want the, need, the very tip of the needle sticking out there just in case I bump the end of it or something like that. It's just uh, paranoia on my part, but that's what happens and that's how I do it. So those are the basics of cleaning and maintaining your airbrush and thank you very much for watching. Greetings model building minions. Today's tip of the week is going to be a cheap and disposable method of giving you a surface to work with putty or epoxy or glue or any of those other things that you often have to mix up in order to use in your model building. If you're like me, over the years you have used all kinds of surfaces to mix epoxy or to uh, lay down putty so that you can use it on a model, uh, various different things that you need a flat surface to mix on, even paint or some place to put down glue so that you can pick it up and put it on the model. I've tried pieces of cardboard, uh, extra pieces of plastic that I might have, uh, I've used these little disposable cups that you can get from restaurant supplies and I've even used these uh, Bondo spreaders that you can get from an auto supply um, usually reasonably cheap. The only drawback to these things is the cardboard eventually you run out you need more. The plastic gets ruined you need to replace that. Even the Bondo spreaders where you can bend it and pop off a lot of the extra stuff that might be stuck on it eventually is going to get clogged up to the point where you can't use it and you need to replace it. So a couple years ago I discovered something at an art store called a disposable pallet. You can buy these at Michaels or Hobby Lobby or any place that sells acrylic or oil painting supplies. And what a disposable pallet is, is individual sheets, it's, it's a, a pallet of sheets of paper with a plastic coating on it. This is an example of one that I set up. You can use it, uh, you can lay down your uh, different putty. I'm, I mainly use this, the Bondo glazing putty, but you could use Tamiya White, Squadron Green, whatever, so that you can then grab it and use it on the model. You can mix epoxy on it. You can mix uh, Evercoat, things like that. You can lay down paint on it. You lay down glue on it. Movie. You can even put super glue on this as a source to be able to pick up small bits and put on onto your model where you need it. In a lot of cases, stuff will just break right off and then you can reuse these areas. But eventually, it's going to get pretty filthy and so you need to replace it. In which case, you just tear off the top sheet and you've got a fresh one right there. Now, most of these pallets come in sizes significantly bigger than this. The one that I had was 11 by 14. So what I did was I cut it into four sections and then took the individual sections and stapled them together. So I have quite a few of these set up in preparation. These will last me a couple of years. It's a great way to keep your area clean, which if you've ever been in my workshop, you know is nearly impossible but anything can help and these are solvent resistant so you can anything you're going to mix to put on a model you can mix on these that's the tip of the week and i hope you enjoyed it hey did you know that you can show your support for amazing plastic to scale model show by going over to our store on cafe press at cafepress.com slash amazing plastic you can get all kinds of wonderful stuff over there to show your support for this show by getting a t-shirt a hoodie or even a coffee cup to have your favorite beverage in first thing in the morning what a way to get your day started you can also get aprons for your workbench and all kinds of other goodies so check out our store today at cafepress.com slash amazing plastic.
Okay, so we're over here at the bench and we're getting ready to apply our hairspray and salt technique um, that I learned from Dr. Cranky. So I got to give Dr. Cranky a big shout out. Now, what we've done here is um, we've already laid down the colors that we want. We put a little dent in one of the fenders. Um, we also uh, did a little bit of a coating on this. I used uh, some future just to uh, set in my color so that I didn't uh, go through all of that color and down to the bare plastic when I start uh, doing some of the other stuff that we need to do. So first thing we want to do is we want to take a cup. We're going to take some hairspray. We're going to decant the hairspray. The stuff that we're using is just finesse, you know, the cheap stuff. So we're going to shake it up. And all we're going to do is we're simply going to spray it into the... Um, the cup and we're going to get a little bit in the cup you can hear that okay so we get a little bit in the cup we don't need a lot we're going to test our airbrush here now you don't want to get hairspray all over everything so we got a little bit of air going in our airbrush and uh, now we're going to lay down a little bit of paper towel which is something we want to do so we can protect our surface here a little bit. Let's just move that out of the way. I'll lay that down. All right. So what we're going to do, let's just move this camera a little bit. There we go. So what we're going to do is, is we're just going to take some hairspray and we're going to put it right into our airbrush. This is the hairspray. We're going to put that in there. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. And we're going to make sure that our airbrush is set properly so what i'm doing what i typically do with my airbrush is i will close it all the way i will get some air going and then i will start to open it up till i get a little bit of moisture come out and i can see some on my paper there so that's about all i want okay we're going to move that out of the way now i'm all just going to coat this with the hairspray And the hairspray is going to help uh, with our salt. And there goes our compressor. It's a little bit noisy. We're not using one of these fancy. Oh, we got to adjust that a little bit more. There we go. All right. So just coat the part where you want to. Uh, your salt to be. We're going to do some salting on the inside as well. And that's pretty much it. So I'm just going to take the rest of this hairspray. I'm going to spray it right into my cleaning pot, which is right here. And I'll just run a little bit of Windex through it. There we go. I'm going to run a little bit of Windex. All right. Just give our airbrush a little bit of a cleaning. Open it right up. Get that fluid right through there. Now I'm using a single action airbrush to do this. Um, later on in today's show, you're going to see me uh with another airbrush actually okay so we got that pretty much cleaned out gonna clean out some excess residue here now we've got a mixture of salts and we're just gonna put this off to the side we made up a mixture of salt and it's really easy to put this stuff on because the hairspray is sticky all I like to do is just slowly put it where I want it and this is a mixture, oh, we're stuck to the paper. Uh, this is a mixture of not only salt, table salt, rock salt. Uh, it's also got some baking soda in it, so that helps. And you can see what we're doing here. It's really going to help us with this rusted effect. 
want to get it right around in that seam. Now, if it seems like, you know, there's there's uh, too much, just kind of dab it off if you think that you've got too much. If you don't think you have enough stickiness, well, you can always go back and just touch it up and just add a little bit more salt, and it should stick just fine. There we go. All right, so let's go to the other side. We're going to get into that crevice. We want to make sure that we filled our dent. And now that's going to look really sharp when we're done. And don't forget about the inside of the box as well. I mean, the inside of the box is going to have some, some wear and tear as well. Looks like we need just a little bit more stickiness here. You can see that we didn't quite get a lot, so we're just going to take our And just dab that in there. There we go. Now this is an old work truck, and that's that's the effect we're trying to achieve here. And now we're just going to shake off some of the excess. Now, the, the thing about the stuff you've just taken off, guess what? Well, we can put all that together. We're back in our little cup, just like we did there. Get rid of some of the excess off our table. And uh, we may want to put a little bit more hairspray on there. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a spray here. Not going to put it in the airbrush, but I am going to use the Q-tip to help me get into some of those areas that that I want to uh, make sure that I get. So I'm going to do a little bit more in here. Some of the heavier. Uh, again, I want to come back to here because it's not quite as heavy as I would like it to be. I'm just going to do that and we'll get some of this more of this around the edge of the fender here. All you're going to all you're really using the hairspray for is to stick the larger um areas and we're going to do a little bit of a weathering effect along that back area. We're not too concerned as to, you know, how good it looks. Because remember, this is our daily driver. So we are going to just give it a little bit of salt. If you don't like how much is there, well, come back and take some of it out. I really want this to look weathered and beaten up and... So when we put our final color on, which we're just about ready to do, okay, and that to me looks almost where I want it to be. I want some larger chunks in there. There we go. All right. So now that that's where I want it to be, I'm going to move the excess hairspray and the salt out of the way. I'll try not to touch areas that I don't want to touch. All right, so we've got our, our airbrush is clean because we just finished cleaning it. Now we're going to mix up some color. So the colors that I used to do the, to do the other part of the uh, build were blue and white. So I'm just going to grab some blue and white, and we're using the model airline from Vallejo, which we always like to use. And we're just going to mix them up. 
shake up your your bottles. So we're using Vallejo's uh, blue, which is seventy one zero zero four in the airline, and we're using the white just to lighten it up a little bit. Now this truck is old and faded, so you know if you don't get the color exactly right that you did on the bot or on the cab, not a big deal. So we're gonna make a uh, little bit uh, of blue in there. Now I kept my old cup, the cup that I did I used before. I kept the cup so I could kind of get the color right. And we're mixing up a little bit of white in there. We'll grab ourselves a toothpick. We'll uh, mix that up a little bit. There we go. Now, if you think it looks a little bit too light from the color that you had previous, well, remember, it's always going to dry a little bit darker. And it's okay because the truck's faded and we don't mind that. So that looks a little bit like the color we had previous. Yeah, might be a little bit of a shade off, but that's okay. This is not a, this is not a perfect truck. We're going to go back to using our big airbrush. We're not using a fine detail brush. We're just going to use our big airbrush here. We're going to pour the paint in. We've got the paint in there now. Wide, too wide open, so we're going to bring down that uh, that look, and we're just going to start painting over everything. So here we're just painting over everything, and now my hands are getting incredibly blue. That's okay. Now, because we use hairspray on this initially, we don't really have to worry too much because we can always come back and we can make some, some scratches if we want. And we want to get that top and there and the box. Now, the surprising thing is, paint goes a long way. In an airbrush, it, it goes an incredible long way. All right, so we're going to leave that to dry. And when we come back, we will start getting rid of some of the other, uh, or once it's dry, we'll start getting rid of some of the uh, salt. And you show, I'll show you how that's done in just a moment. So we painted the box. Everything's here. We're going to clean out our airbrush again. And uh, once we've done that, then we are going to move on to, uh, once this is dry, we're going to move on to getting rid of the salt. And I'll show you how we do that with water and a brush. Stay tuned.
All right, so now we're back and we are going to start getting rid of some of the salt. We haven't let the paint fully cure, which is okay uh, in this case, because again, we're going for a really weathered effect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a big brush, something that's kind of got a stiff bristle on it. I like to use something that has a stiff bristle on it. I think I've got one here. Here we go. This is a stiff bristle brush that I've used in the past. Uh, all I'm gonna do now is just take some water in a cup, just like we used before. And here's some water. We're just gonna spray this in the cup. Now this water has a little bit of, of dish detergent in it. You don't have to use dish, dish detergent, but I like to use dish, dish detergent in my water just because it helps uh, flow better. And uh, so I'm just gonna dip that in there and I'm just going to come by. And you see this area here? I'm just going to start to dissolve that salt and some of the other stuff that's there. And work in small areas. As you work in small areas, you will find that uh, it's easier to control. You can use paper towel or you can use tooth. Uh, cotton swabs to help you get into some of those areas where you know you had material. And in this case, we're just going to use a cotton swab to help us get rid of some of that. It also helps us to scrape some of the areas that we want to scrape and get down. There we go. You can see the effect that we're, we're starting to achieve there now. Very nice effect. And we're just gonna keep going with this. I'm gonna use the brush again, wet down. The areas that I want it to dissolve. And we'll just keep going with this. Now, right around this fender, this is, the reason I like to use a stiff brush is because I can also kind of scrape with a stiff brush. And you can see now I'm coming down on the side and uh, it's cleaning it up a little bit. It's getting rid of that salt and it's getting rid of the grime. I'm using the, the cotton swab now to just kind of take out some of the excess And we know that a truck like this is going to have more wear on the front than it does on the side. So we can take our stiff brush and we can come down and we can just break that up. Use that stiff brush, get right into that crevice because that's where water is going to settle naturally. And it's going to look natural if you kind of scrub it in there a little bit. Now you can do this with a wire brush if you like. A wire brush is going to leave um, a lot more uh, deeper scratches in it. You can do that if you want. I don't suggest that because plastic is already kind of soft. Um, so we're just all we're trying to do is just weather the truck, keep some of the paint on it that we've already got, and make it look because we're going to come back later. And when we do that, I'm going to show you how to continue the weathering on this. What a fantastic show this week. We got to look at the F100 and learn a little bit about a different painting technique. We had Jay Barron talking about his wonderful way of breaking down your airbrushes, cleaning them up, and maintaining them so they last you a long time. And, of course, we, uh, we really like the Neo from Iwata. That's a great double action airbrush, and I hope that you go out and get one soon. Just before we wrap up, I want to thank everybody in our Google Plus community one more time because we are almost at 500 members. Now, what we're trying to do is also 
bring our numbers up on YouTube as well. So if you haven't subscribed to us over at Amazing Plastic on YouTube, please do so. And uh, we would really like you to come by, leave a comment, tell us what you like or what you don't like about the show. And we'd be happy to uh, look at those comments, make any changes that are necessary in the show as we move forward. Because this is our first season and we've got still got a lot to learn. And uh, we want to make this show as entertaining and informative for you as we possibly can. So your input is very much valued uh, as we move forward with Amazing Plastic Scale Model Show. Now, one thing I want to tell you about is we are starting a a uh, charity build on January 1st, 2014. Now, what we're doing is we are building models for charity. We're going to auction these off, and all the funds raised are going to go to that charity uh, at the end of April, or I think in May. I haven't quite... Uh, I haven't quite got those full details yet, but I believe we are going to be giving all the money raised from the models that we auction off from builders in our community um, to raise money for a children's cancer uh, facility, and uh, they do some great work, and uh, we'll announce who that uh, charity is very, very shortly. Now, uh, if you want to get involved, it's real easy. Just send us an email to info at amazingplastic.com and just put in the subject line, charity build. Let us know who you are, what you're building. All of the uh, rules and regulations for this charity build are up on our Google Plus community in the community news section, or you can check out it on the Amazing Plus or Amazing Plastic uh, website at amazingplastic.com. All the details are there as well. And we look forward to seeing you again next week right here on Amazing Plastic, the Scale Model Show. And we look forward to another builder and a whole lot more. So come on back and we'll see you again right here in the workshop. <laughs>